October 2023 will go down as one of the best months in gaming by a long shot. So many options and so little time, it's either the best thing for your free time or it's a soul-crushing experience watching your backlog pile up. Going into the stacked month, I knew one of the guaranteed titles I'd be picking up was none other than Spider-Man 2. Swinging exclusively onto the PS5, Spider-Man 2 is a third-person action game developed by Insomniac Games released on October 20th. This game is the highly anticipated sequel to Insomniac's mega-success collaborations with Sony and Marvel. Our previous Spider Journey saw us follow Peter Parker in the first Spider-Man entry, then following Miles Morales in his standalone experience. In Spider-Man 2, we see a compelling web of a narrative weaved between both Spider-Men delivering a truly elevated superhero experience for the next generation. In what can only be described as a massive, over-the-top intro, the Spider-Men are alerted to the rampage of Flint Marco, aka the Sandman, through Manhattan. After a larger-than-life battle, the Spiders defeat Sandman and capture him. Before he is taken off, he leaves Miles and Peter with an ominous warning of a substantial threat on its way to the city. His allusion, of course, to the vicious hunter of the Spider-Man universe, Kraven the Hunter. Craven travels to New York seeking a true challenger to his overwhelming power. He begins hunting Spider-Man's dense catalog of villains in an attempt to curate the ultimate hunting ground in hopes to be finally killed by his true superior. In the backdrop, a sinister alien life form finally awakens as the symbiote parasite Venom lurks inside of Harry Osborn. Spider-Man 2 tells an expansive tale and one that evolves naturally and quite epically in the inundated hero genre. The roller coaster we go on is filled with tons of ups and downs, and it's carried by a fundamentally solid structure of great writing, characters, and relationships that are dynamic and worth investing in. Spider-Man 2 is a superhero video game at its heart, and with that in mind, there are some clunky and silly dialogue lines that feel very forced, but those moments are scattered and trumped by the beautiful performances put on by the voice cast and portrayed by the team. The writing in this game is genuinely the real deal and filled with serious emotion and depth. It's not an easy task writing a narrative for two major protagonists and a wide array of meaningful, heavily involved side characters. To be expected, Insomniac shows up again with a narrative that moves through challenging moments for these characters as people and as heroes. Spider-Man 2 has some of the most smooth gameplay we've experienced in the action-adventure category to date. But what I find interesting is how Insomniac didn't look to reinvent the wheel, rather capture what was great about Spider-Man and Miles Morales and elevate those experiences in this chapter. I feel a strong mantra for Spider-Man 2 is familiar yet elevated, and you'll hear me repeat that throughout this review. Spider-Man 2 has the tough job of balancing multiple playable characters in a meaningful way that not only rounds the characters narratively, but creates validity for the inclusion of two heroes that you can switch between freely. So making them come to life with a unique skill set really helped cement their personal identities and make the ability to play Miles or Pete feel actually rewarding. Each Spider-Man has a varying set of power skills that they can use during combat. Peter uses a combination of spider-arm techniques and is later augmented with symbiote powers as the story progresses, while Miles, on the other hand, has an expansion to the advanced Venom electric powers we see him have in his personal title. Like I said, while Pete and Miles' skills are unique and aesthetic, they are fundamentally the same mechanically, and the type of actions and movements you can generally expect in their combat set. For example, the L1 plus square power moves results in a one and done type skill, whereas the L1 and X typically launches enemies in the air for both Spider-Men. Miles and Pete share the same set of gadgets, which feels pretty good. I think them having relatively similar skill sets and identical gadgets helps with combat fluidity, but it would have been nice to see some gadgets custom to their personal skill set. Outside of web shooters, all the gadgets are brand new and feel much more balanced than in previous games. Quite frankly, the gadgets in Spider-Man 1 and Miles Morales were too busted, and you could dominate a tough fight with gadget spam. Now each gadget has fewer charges and provides an edge rather than a guarantee, and I actually really like that. One of the newest mechanisms, which I thought was a no-brainer to add, was the combat parry. There's really not much to it but a combat parry. Block in a certain window, and you can respond with a strong attack. Given a handful of changes that really do make the combat feel good, the combat is nearly identical to the previous entries. I know that's going to twist some people up, but I think reinventing the wheel when you have a perfect formula is a bad game decision. 
Similar to the Arkham franchise, Batman's combat system never changes, he just adds new mechanisms to weave into that beautiful free flow system. Spider-Man 2's enemies are relatively the same as its predecessors, most of which kind of seem and feel like reskins. Brute enemies are given weapons this go around, and some of the enemies have annoying tech like anti-air nets, and then there's some robots and such, but nothing that really pushes Spider-Man's combat to this incredibly advanced or difficult experience. The dynamic changes to combat really come forward in boss battles. While not the hardest fights in the world, Spider-Man 2 has a massive array of boss fights that implore spectacle and excitement in tandem with gigantic set pieces and moving parts that often rival other Sony first-party experiences. And while combat may not be super difficult for me, there were some genuine challenging moments to figure out, such as the windows or attack patterns for certain bosses, but each fight was incredibly epic and had me walking away like, Stop it, Suki, you're killing them! <laughs> The same, if it ain't broke mentality is applied to Spider-Man 2's stealth system. I think the only unique flavor added to this department is the web line, which is no doubt very cool. The web line is an awesome new ability that allows you to simply shoot a line of web from spot A to spot B that creates a new vantage point for you to stealth on. But the stealth is definitely one of the least engaging elements of the Spider-Man series. But the most notable changes comes in the form of the MJ missions. Anyone who played Spider-Man 1 remembers Mary Jane Watson sequences, and these engagements make their return. But I think Insomniac heard fan responses and decreased those engagements because they were maybe two to three in the whole game. Which is honestly kind of a bummer though, because the changes they made to the MJ gameplay is actually quite good. MJ feels faster and her skill set is more rounded. Her ability to stealth out hunters feels much better than its predecessor, and her sable training feels like it actually paid off because she's a total badass. On top of that, the level design for her experiences were really elevated. In Spider-Man 1, I felt like I was traveling a hallway just kind of especially made for MJ, whereas now you have options and really dynamic engagements to play around in. I think most important to me, the MJ moments feel like valuable assets to the story versus a series of side quests around the story. Once you get into the meat and potatoes of Spider-Man 2, you're able to switch between Pete and Miles more frequently, which grants access to a new array of side quests and activities. Spider-Man 2 brings an entirely new suite of side quests to the table, and the only thing that's a direct port from the predecessors is random crime throughout the city. Random crime feels like there are less activities and are just very repetitive. They also appear more often than they previously did, but this time around they have no requirement for completion in each section of the map. They're just in there for some bonus experience and a chance to kick some ass. I do want to note, one of the best additions to random crime is the ability to run into the crew. You like what you see? I was super stoked the first time I ran into Miles, already killing it before I showed up to a random crime event. And Miles and friends aren't just there as props. I've sat around to watch them execute the crime stops just to see if they're active NPCs, <laughs> and they freaking rip. Some side quests will require you to be a specific Spider-Man. Emily May science stations are done entirely by Peter, a side quest chain that has some of the largest diversity of activities in the game, ranging from splicing plant genetics to blasting digital bee predators in Central Park. Whereas Miles gains access to Mysterium portals, which kind of function like Screwball and Taskmaster trials that just have a specific time and goal for you to achieve. Some of these, like the Hunter Blinds, are available to both Spider-Mans, but they're practically Fisk hideouts just reskin. I think what Spider-Man 2 does best with its side quests is it makes them feel important to the overall narrative outside of a couple fun little outliers. It's nice because while the repetitive side quests do exist, the extra quests from the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app are 100% unique and tell great narratives of the people who make New York worth saving. The world building definitely took a step up, even if the number of activities decreased. One of the things I'm happy they reduced is the sheer number of collectibles and tiny nooks and crannies you have to dig through. Spider-Bots are visually cool, and I felt I found all 42 naturally through playing. That leads me perfectly to the traversal and map changes. Tell me why Insomniac implemented one of the most impressive fast travel systems in gaming just to offer the smoothest, cleanest, most exhilarating movement in all of gaming. I think I fast traveled maybe five times. Web slinging is just the coolest shit ever, and they had to go and add some web wings that let me glide around the city with the speed of Hermes? 
Web gliding, in combination with swinging, complemented by the suite of new movement enhancements, makes Spider-Man 2 one of the most fluid movement experiences I've ever had in a digital space. Just about every person I know who has seen or played is like, how do I do anything other than swing around? The answer is you just swing around. You do nothing else. It's what I found myself doing a lot of the time. There's also a ton of options to tweak in the settings to allow the game to guide your swinging or allow for a more natural player-driven swinging experience, which can lead to some nasty spills. All of these amazing movement skills, fast travel, and activities are all scattered about the island you've come to love and spread out now on the fresh locations of Queens and Brooklyn. For better or for worse, I don't feel like the addition of Brooklyn and Queens makes the game feel any bigger but I don't think it's because of improper scale or lack of things to explore. It's strictly based on how insane the movement dial was cranked. There's quite a bit that I'm not talking about because frankly, it's interwoven into the story beats and I do not want to be the one to spoil the bunch. I think there's truly something to say about familiar yet elevated looking at the gameplay. Spider-Man, like Insomniac's other mega franchise, Ratchet and Clank, is just built on great bones. Throwing out that base for the sake of doing something new would be pointless when all they needed was to deliver a higher level of fluidity and activity, and I think they hit that mark. This section kind of feels totally unnecessary. Did anyone expect this game to not look and sound good? Spider-Man 2 looks, feels, and sounds like a truly next generation game. I feel both visual and performance mode do this game justice, but in this review, and quite frankly anytime I can, I choose performance mode for that crispy 60 frames per second. Spider-Man 2 implores a variable ray tracing system for each mode, so if you came expecting those beautiful reflections and volumetrics, you've come to the right place regardless of the mode you select. This game is stunning, and the amount of visual customization through your suits is incredible, and looks stunning as you zip through the world as either Miles or Peter. But I mean, the suits, baby, the suits. Honestly, the suit variation and the customization options to certain suits was an amazing addition. I bring up the suits because the game uses maybe one or two in-engine rendered cutscenes, but beyond these outliers, every scene is a real-time interaction with your suits and suit damage reflecting with the major story moments. There are a few times the game forces a suit change because of the story, but take that information good or bad, you might end up looking a tad wild in a touching moment. The reflectivity of surfaces is honestly bananas, including buildings, water puddles, rivers, down to the reflections in some of Spider-Man's helmets and eyes. Couple that with round three of Insomniac's very powerful photo mode, you will be taking pictures left and right if you're like me. Spider-Man's visuals eat the house down. But I think very similar to its predecessor, the thing that shines the most is the animations. Spider-Man's entire skill set and iconic hero poses are built around his flexibility and odd positioning. This game never falters whether you're kicking the crap out of someone and sticking them to a wall, or the way your body gracefully bends around the corners of a building as you web glide, there is a horde of animations to check out. Couple that with the fact that some suits offer unique finisher animations, and teaming up with Miles or other side characters offer beautifully crafted finishers and combos to play around with, the game is truly next level good looking. The audio department never fails us in Spider-Man 2. The music is just phenomenal, and its implementation helps elevate the very playful and curious moments against the dramatic and harrowing moments the narrative guides us through. I'm very happy they kept the individual swinging music for both of the spiders, Peter's iconic hero theme, and that same tune augmented with an awesome beat for Miles, I could close my eyes and know which spider were swinging just by the sounds. Miles and Peter also have a very playful banter with one another as you'd expect, but buzzing around the city, their inner monologues or reactions to story events really give us a glimpse into the character's thoughts moment to moment. The world feels so reactive and the audio cues really help round out the exceptional visual performance. It's wild. Between the music, ambient noises of the city, turning off Spider-Man 2 feels like putting on noise-canceling headphones in a real city. I'm able to really take in the quiet, and it's not until then that I realize how masterfully Insomniac captured the sound profile of a major city. It almost becomes white noise while you're playing. Spider-Man 2 is a great game in so many ways. I've stated throughout I feel like this game is so familiar, but changed in so many ways that it kept me coming back. One of the things that I like the most about Spider-Man 2 is it very much satisfies those larger-than-life hero moments and delivers them in a dazzling way, but it does a standout job at showing us the people behind the mask and not always just in the face of some tragedy. 
I think about when Rio learned about Miles being Spider-Man in his standalone game. That action taking place there gave us space for a real dynamic relationship in Spider-Man 2 of her duty as a public servant and the value that Spider-Man brings the community juxtaposed to her duty as a mom to her son. We get a detailed look at this complicated part of the fabric of their relationship. It's this background and character building that demonstrates their love for one another and deepens Miles' connections to his heritage and community. All of this to say, in terms of the actual gameplay, story, and photos galore, I clocked the Platinum Trophy at just about 33 hours, so give or take 4-5 to five hours of pictures, just shy of 30 hours for 100% completion. I won't mince words and I won't go into it in extreme detail, I don't think that short games is a bad thing, and I think that the dollar per game hour notion is very silly and leads to some activities that waste our time as players. And to that effect, every hour I spent in Spider-Man was filled with a ton of fun and just overall excitement. Even though it's very clear I do like this game, it doesn't mean that I can't be objective about some genuine gripes. I recognize we shouldn't fix things that aren't broken, but I feel there was very little risk taken in this game. Nothing felt radically new, and that never stopped me from being completely wowed, but nothing we ever got to play with in the sandbox made me go, this is genius and we will see this in the future of third person action games. While these things weren't revolutionary, they felt very smartly implemented in the world of Spider-Man. Web Wings is a smart implementation of the game industry's current obsession with gliders. Out of this world environments and outrageous set pieces takes the place of risky gameplay experiences and choices. I can agree with some criticism that many of the gameplay changes are surface level changes, without really having to change the guts of the game. But to that point, the technology is just astounding, and it feels like exploration of combat and combat elements was the trade-off for fidelity, tech, and movement. Lastly to my point earlier about difficulty in combat, I think Insomniac truly understands the superhero fantasy. If you're dying over and over to a boss fight, and you don't feel super powerful against a bunch of random goons, you've missed the mark. In Spider-Man, even when you take some big hits, it's really easy to get back into the fight and put the punishment back onto enemies and bosses alike. Spider-Man 2 came out of the gates swinging in a massive year of blockbuster games. Taking the incredible bones of the previous game, Spider-Man 2 does little to take risks from that formula, but elevates the familiar experience in just enough to feel shiny and new. With a well-rounded, emotional, and highly entertaining narrative at its backbone, the now expanded streets of New York have never felt better in a game. Peter, Miles, MJ, and the expansive cast feels grounded and round. I never felt like I was doing something for nothing, with fun callbacks, easter eggs, and histories sprinkled throughout the game. The narrative is the secret sauce for this game, with some repetition to the activities, but a new list to choose from, exploring Brooklyn and Queens feels great, even if the improved movement and the insane fast travel make it feel like a blur in the window. Combat is fun and feels like riding a bike in the genre, but it feels familiar in a way that can get stale after the 50th random crime engagement. Boss fights are both engaging and cinematically outstanding, a perfect balance of cinema and combat with what felt like fewer quick time events than most Sony first party games. It feels like a moot point, mentioning how gorgeous the game looks and sounds, and the overall scale and fidelity feel like one of the furthest steps we've come to capture reality in gaming. At the end of the day, Spider-Man 2 lands a solid 8 out of 10 in my book. It takes everything that's great about the previous games and brings that forward with a captivating story driving you around the expanded city. A few activities and top-notch storytelling make the game feel it's most new and refined. Everything else is what you'd expect from a seasoned developer like Insomniac in a sequel to Spider-Man. I want to be very clear that that is in no way a bad thing. Spider-Man and Miles Morales set the bar high, and I think this game sits with its predecessors by taking that foundation and adding some missing seasoning. Spider-Man 2 is a marvelous game, and shows that two Spider-Men are in fact just greater together. Thank you for your time as always. Support the video by liking and letting me know what you think in the comments. Support the channel with a sick subscribe. Until next time, y'all.